In my opinion, I think the Gulf is, is very badly mismanaged. If we lose our fishing industry and our charter fleet, we, we li really lose who we are. The reefs that we fish out here, that we built out here in the Alabama Reef Zone, it's just all red snapper. I mean, just anywhere you go, you, you can't even hardly catch your other tight reef fish because the snapper are so prevalent on everything you go to. The, the industry cannot sustain us. There's just no way these guys can make a living because you can't run a boat two months out of the year and try to find work for the rest. It doesn't work that way. The fish is quite obviously not in trouble, and uh, we need a little help now. <laughs> you know, we're the ones in trouble. When one thinks of red snapper populations in the Gulf of Mexico, one has to understand the incredible demographic changes that have occurred in that population over the past 150 years. When the fishery first started in the late 19th century, it was centered off of Mobile and Pensacola and the West Florida Shelf. But once the oil platforms came into being, uh, the fishery began to, to shift more to the north and the west. There are about 4,000 oil platforms in the western gulf, and off the coast of Alabama, there are about 17,000 artificial reefs that have been put in primarily for fishery purposes. The Red Snapper World Championship was founded back in 2004, and for six years, was the largest bottom fishing tournament in the world. The Alabama Gulf Coast, of course, has the largest reef zone in the world and is the reason why we are the red snapper capital of the world. In 2004, when we started this tournament, uh, the tournament generated an additional $3 million worth of business at this marina alone, and probably six to $8 million along the Gulf Coast. And that doesn't include heads and beds, restaurants, business, all that is is fuel, bait, ice, and your charter trip. In 2007, the, the, the National Marine Fisheries moved the opening date for snapper to June the 1st. When they moved it to June the 1st, then we lost that entire increase in revenue because you couldn't keep snapper anymore. We couldn't have the tournament during that time period. We did not generate one additional dollar by moving it to June the 1st, because the tourists that were here, even though we had this tournament, the people were, they were going fishing, having a great time anyway. So what happens when you move an event like this to a time frame when you really don't need it, it does not help your business. I have seen uh, how detrimental this short season of just two months has been to our economy and also to the fishing industry and, and the families that that run these charter boats themselves. So from a, an economic perspective, we need the six month season that fills boats and brings dollars in in the spring, which is a slow part of the year, and in the fall, again, traditionally another slow time of year. So an expanded season really helps economically our entire area. For our customers, it's put a bad taste in their mouth, you know? They're, they're used to coming down here and being able to go catch a red snapper or, or whatever, and then they call you up to go fishing, and you're like, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, the season's closed, and they're like, what? It's the end of July. I'm like, I know, we had a 46-day season or a 42-day season, and they're just like, you're kidding me. I'm like, yeah, I know, I wish I was kidding you. You know, that's why I guess a lot of the trips have changed from, oh yeah, we'll go bottom fishing to, to, to just trolling. Right now, for 40 days, we're putting trips on top of trips on top of trips, trying to get, you know, telling all of our customers, you gotta come between June 1st and, you know, July, whatever, to go fishing. And some days we run three trips in a day. Had to have another captain come run your boat, you know, and uh, you go home and try to grab some sleep because you gotta be doing it again tomorrow just to get the trips in. If we had a longer season, of course we could spread that out we can get back to normal, you know, normal fishing like we always used to do. The fish have gotten more and more prevalent where anybody, I mean, just honest to God, anybody can get on a boat and get two or three numbers to an artificial reef or two and go out there and catch big snapper as fast as they can throw a bait in the water. So it's got us trapped into a super short season and the fish are probably, I would say at least 
10 times more of them than it was 20 years ago. You can't hardly catch anything but them, and yet we can't keep them, what, two, not even two whole months. So it's probably, we'll probably be lucky to have a 30-day season this coming year. It's just absolute insanity. Today I've been doing maintenance, even though we haven't been anywhere this week or anything. All that stuff still keeps rocking right on, whether you're going fishing or not, you know? Our city growing out of a fishing heritage, it's not just about the dollars and cents sometimes. It's about if we lose our fishing industry and our charter fleet, we, we li really lose who we are. People come here and they love the beach. They don't stay on the beach all day. They love to see fish. They love to see fishing boats. Kids love to see the fishermen and talk to the fishermen and watch them bring the fish to the docks. You know, people come down from all over the country to Orange Beach, which is known as the red snapper capital of the world, to partake in the fishery here. You know, they come down to go to the beach, to go fishing, you know, they eat the seafood from here. So we have invested and worked hard over the years to create what is really the premier artificial reef program with a little over 1,200 square miles, with over 20,000 artificial reefs that work not only to give people places to fish, but provide that habitat and produce a lot of red snapper and other reef fish. Over the last several years, with the limited seasons for red snapper, you know, all the time, money, and resources that have been invested in that reef program, the people that have worked so hard to contribute to that and to make this uh, reef program what it is, they're not able to reap the benefits of that. Fishing uh, means a tremendous amount to this area in my business because of the fact it increases our rental income, and this increases the rental tax money that goes to the state, sales tax money that they spend on buying food and going out to do things while they're here. If, if things continue on the course they're, they're heading now, which essentially it seems to be someone wants fishing to be eliminated, the the industry cannot sustain itself. There's just no way these guys can make a living because you can't run a boat two months out of the year and try to find work for the rest. It doesn't work that way. They've got to be able to fish at least six months out of the year. So it's going to be very hard for families that have been doing this for generations to survive. And the conservation department would listen and treat everybody fair, then all parties would be better off. And more, if we built more reefs, we're doing nothing but ensuring fishing for future generations here. And all these things are important because those people will eventually rent condos here and spend money here. And that will be the lifeblood of this community for many years to come. People think that since there's so many red snapper out there, the Gulf should be healthy. You know, in my opinion, I think the Gulf is, is very badly mismanaged. You know, you have, like I said, back in the 80s, there was, there was an equal amount of fish, you know. True, the red snapper were smaller and, and more scarce. And I've never said that there shouldn't be some regulation on getting, you know, the red snapper back to where they need to be, kind of. But it's just went grossly overboard to where the reefs that we fish out here, that we've built out here in Alabama Reef Zone, it's just all red snapper, you know. There's, there's no way another fish can survive on it. You know, if another fish is on one of the reefs, he's big because if anything that's small would get eaten, you know, because the reefs are just overloaded with red snapper. We need to get back to a longer red snapper season to balance the gulf back out. You know, uh, not talking about going overboard and catching them all, but just to, 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 to put a balance in. Right now there's plenty of fish in the gulf. There's an overabundance of red snapper. They're a, they're a nuisance most of the time. And uh, I'm afraid, personally, I'm afraid that they may uh, pose a hazard to some of the other species that we have here. I'm not a scientist, but I have seen them take over the reefs in my little bit of fishing history here. They're pretty dominant fish. They're pretty aggressive. If the fish were in trouble, I'd be one of the first pe people screaming to shut them down. Because uh, if there's not any fish out there, we're not going to make a living. You know, we, we got to have got to be able to catch some nice fish for people to enjoy going and spend their money doing it. And if the fish is quite obviously not in trouble, and uh, we need a little help now. You know, we're the ones in trouble. In 2006, according to NOAA's own numbers, over $630 million was spent 
by the customers who come to enjoy the recreational fishing of Alabama's Gulf Coast. In 2009, those numbers had declined by over 24%. What this means is that in their same report, over 1,600 jobs were lost due to the decline in the ability to catch red snapper. If we were able to fish like we could back in 04, 05, and 06, and have a six to eight month season, our revenue streams would go right back to where they were before without costing the taxpayer one penny. What I feel makes the population of the red snapper on artificial reefs underutilized in the stock assessment is the, the way that the model has been put together in the past. It, they don't really account for the fish off of artificial structures at the same ratio as they do off natural bottom. So with Alabama having primarily artificial reef, 20,000 reef worth of red snapper and other reef fish that aren't included uh, at the correct ratios in the model, you know, has the potential to, to, to undervalue the amount of red snapper in the Gulf of Mexico. The solution to this problem is a better stock assessment for red snapper. A stock assessment that gives full credit to the artificial structures off of Alabama and the oil platforms off the northern and western Gulf. When these are included in a new stock assessment, we'll come out with a quota that's far greater than the one we have now. And when that occurs, we'll be able to extend the season eventually to six or eight months uh, for the year. So the important thing to appreciate regarding the snapper population is the incredible changes of the ecosystem which have resulted in the potential harvest probably three, maybe even four times greater than it is right now. And there's no doubt that off of Alabama, we could have a six to eight month season and it wouldn't make a dent in the overall population of snapper.